Father, we thank you for today. We thank you, Lord, for giving us the grace and the mercy to see this wonderful day. We bless your holy name because you've been a faithful God all this while. No one can compare to the goodness and your greatness over our lives. We thank you because it's not because we're so good. It's not because we're better than anybody, but because you, Lord, you've been merciful to us. We want to thank you, Lord, for your mercy. We want to thank you, Lord, for your grace. Blessed be your name forever. Lord, I pray that as your word comes forth this morning, Lord, you will anoint my mouth, that I will speak that which is your word, that which you want your people to hear in the name of Jesus. I pray that people will be delivered, people will be set free from every form of bondage in the name of Jesus. I pray that your healing power will be made manifest in the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, Lord. For in Jesus' precious name we prayed. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Great opportunity for me to stand before you great people of God, you know, to just share God's word with you. And I'm going to start by reading a couple of scriptures. And I'd like you to follow along. If you don't have a Bible, you can share with someone sitting beside you. Just make sure you're sharing the Bible and not something else. So praise the Lord. Okay, the book of Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6 to 7. Uh, I'd like the multimedia please to help me. It says that, Then he said to me, This is what the Lord says to Zerubbabel. It is not by force or by strength, but by my spirit, says the Lord of what? The Lord of the heavenly army. Some, another version says the Lord of hosts. Now go on to the next chapter. It said, Nothing, not even a mighty mountain will stand in in Zerubbabel's way. Not even a mighty mountain will stand in your way in the name of Jesus. It's the Bible says now, it's not the fact that the mountain will stand in your way. The Bible says it won't stand in your way and because of that, the mountain will become a level plain. Now you might be, if you're going through something this morning, I'm here to congratulate you because what you're going through is going to become a level plain in the name of Jesus. Because that's what the word of God said. Now the Bible went ahead to say that this is what the Lord says. It's not what I'm saying. It's what the Bible says. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 4. Isaiah chapter 4. We're going to read from verse 5. If you found it, say hallelujah. If you haven't found it, say God help me. All right. God will definitely help you. Bible says, I cry unto the Lord in time of help, and he helped me. If you found it, say amen. Okay, even the multimedia guys have found it. They said, then the Lord will provide shade for Mount Zion. And all who assemble there, he will provide a canopy of cloud during the day. And smoke of flaming fire at night, covering the glorious land. Now go to the next one. It says, it will be a shelter from daytime heat. And a hiding place from storms and rain. God will protect you in the precious name of Jesus. This is the portion God has for you this week in the name of Jesus. That during the day, when you go out during the day, God will put a protection over you in the precious name of Jesus. One more, two more scriptures. The book of Psalms 34 verse 7. Psalms 34 verse 7. It says, For the angel of the Lord is a God. He surrounds and defends all those who fear him. The angel of the Lord will be a God to you and your children in the name of Jesus. As you go out in the morning, as you come out during the day, as you go out in the night, the angel of the Lord will be a God over you in the name of Jesus. You know, sometimes when you're walking across the road and you hit your foot against a stone, you know what you need to do? You need to question your angel. Say, what were you looking at? You made me hit my foot against the stone. Aren't you supposed to guide me? Because I do that a lot. Praise the Lord. The last one is in Psalm 65. Psalm 65 verse 11. Psalms 65 verse 11. It says, you crown the year with bountiful harvest. Now the year is about to get to an end. I remember when Dickiness Christine was up here and she was telling us uh, it looked like a dream. That we came here on January 1st and we had the first service of the year. And now we're in November. Before you know it, it's December. 
And before you know it, it's another year, 2018. But look at what God's going to do to you at the end of this year. I said, you crown the year with bountiful harvest. Even the hard parts overflow with abundance. You will overflow with abundance towards the end of this year in the name of Jesus. It said, the grasslands of the wilderness become a lush pasture. And the hillsides blossom with joy. You will blossom with joy towards the end of this year in the name of Jesus. You know what? I know one thing about God. God keeps the best for the last. If you remember the wedding at Canaan, the Bible said they, they, they served the guests with all the wine they could find. But you see, at the end of it, when everything ran out, Jesus brought in the best. Your best is yet to come. And it will come in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Let's quickly open our Bibles this time around to the book of Matthew chapter 15. I'm not going to read it from verse 20, from verses 21 to 28. Now it talks about a Canaanite woman who came to Jesus Christ and asked him for a miracle. Now the Bible says that th in some versions of the scripture, the Bible says that um, this woman was a Gentile, that she wasn't, she wasn't a believer, she wasn't of the tribe of Israel. And the Bible said that Jesus, she came to Jesus and he came and asked Jesus to, to heal her demonic child. And the Bible went ahead to say that this, look at it, when, Jesus, when she asked Jesus to heal her child at the first time, the Bible said Jesus didn't answer her. You see, when, uh, when, when Toyosi was giving her, her, her testimony and she was saying that uh, she knows the number of rejects she got, do you know that is part of your life of faith when you get rejected? Because the Bible says the stones with the builders rejected shall one day become the cap corner stone. So if you haven't been rejected before, you can't become the cap corner stone. But if you've been rejected several times before, don't worry about it. It's because those who rejected you will come back and accept you. Because that's what the Bible says. The Bible said Jesus didn't say a word. He not only didn't say a word, the Bible said he kept silent. And you know there are times that it seems that God is silent. And there are times that it seems that God is not, it's like God didn't hear my prayers. And then be, that's when you start to do all sorts of things. You pray prayers of warfare, you pray prayers of petition. You do everything and it seems like God is silent. Now why would Jesus be silent? This woman came and you know what? When I was studying that scripture, I wondered maybe, I, I thought that maybe the woman came to Jesus and she didn't come with the right approach. You, she came to Jesus and said, thou, O Lord. She called Jesus Lord. She said, son of David. What else does he want? She acknowledged him as the Lord. She acknowledged who he was. But Jesus kept silent. Because Jesus was wanted to know whether she would stand on her faith. I'm here to tell you this morning, if you're believing God or trusting God for anything, and it seems like God is silent on you, it's because when he wants to talk, he's going to talk with a loud voice. I'm telling you, listen to me. When Jesus was about to answer that woman, he said, Oh, ye woman. That woman entered into the hall of fame in heaven. The hall of faith in heaven. That woman is mentioned in every gospel of the Bible. Because of one thing. She didn't allow rejection to pull her back. Jesus didn't only reject her. You know what he said? Jesus called her a dog. Jesus called her a dog. Now people might mock you. People might look at you and say, oh, you've been serving God. Look at where you are. Look at your life. My life's better than yours. Don't worry. Tell them that you're coming. Look at someone beside you and tell them, I'm coming. I'm coming, oh Lord. Because you see, sometimes, it's not just sometimes, but all the time, we have to go through these things so that our faith will be tested. But the good thing about it is that at the end of it all, it comes out great. And the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. So tell somebody beside you, hold on. Tell someone else, hold on. Tell someone else, hold on. I want you to memorize that scripture when you get home and keep telling it to yourself. Maybe you've been to a place where they rejected you. You went for a job just like Toyosi and they said, sorry, uh, we'll call you back later and the role's not available. I want you to keep telling yourself the stone which the builders rejected shall one day become the cap corner stone. Come on, tell yourself I'm the stone which the builders have rejected. But one day I'll become the cap corner stone. Jesus was rejected several times. People looked at him. Some people came to him and called him a devil. I said, you're a devil. You cast out demons with the devil. But this Jesus became the one everybody looks on to for salvation. 
and so shall be your situation in the name of Jesus. Those who have rejected you will come to you for solutions. Those who have rejected you will come for you for, for things that they want in the name of Jesus. But you have to learn to hold on. You have to learn to hold on. Keep at it. Don't give up. And as you do so, the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, in that scripture that I read, if you look at the latter part of it, there's something that I want to actually talk about today. I only, that, what I just said now was just in passing. Now, I'm not going to exceed my time because I've got a timer right in front of me. And it's still green. And I hope it still stays green. I can even pray for it to stay green. And I hope God will answer my prayers. <laughs> Amen. So, but I won't exceed my time. Now, you notice something. Now, Jesus said something. When that woman came to him, Jesus said that it's not good for us to give the bread of the children to the dogs. And the woman said something. said, yeah, I know. They said, but sometimes the servants or the dogs eat from the crumbs. Now, there's a difference between the bread and the crumbs, which means that sometimes you can get the bread from God and there are sometimes some people get the crumbs from God, which means there are some people that get the best from God and there are some people that don't get the best from God. Now, it's not God's fault. It's our fault. It's never, now, listen to me. There are three things I want you to note. One, every good gift comes from God. Every good thing you have, your car, your home, your, your career, your voice, your ability to play the piano, everything, your beauty, it came from who? The book of James. Because of time, I won't read it, but James chapter 1 verse 17 says, every good and perfect gift comes from who? From God. And the book of James, I mean, the book of John chapter 3 verse 27 says something. It says, a man can receive nothing except it's given to him from above. So you see, every good thing, every good thing that you have was given to you by who? I can't hear you. Was given to you by who? It came from God. Now, do you know what I noticed? And I noticed that, you know, despite the fact that God has given you some good things, he's given you good children, he's given you good cars, good homes, good careers and all that, he still wants to give you more. Now, when I say God wants to give you more, I'm not saying that you, God has given you two cars and he wants to give you 17 cars. Now, if God gives you 17 cars, those 17 cars are not meant for you. They're meant for other people. So it becomes lasciviousness if you take all those 17 cars to yourself. Now, you're defeating the purpose of God. I'll show you in the scriptures that one of the reasons why God blesses us is so that we can bless others and so that others can thank God. If you read the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9, I'll show you later. It says, God had made you, will make you generous so that you can be generous to others and that others might thank God. So when I say God wants to give you much more, the book of Ephesians chapter, chapter 3 verse 20 says, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, far above what we may ask or even think. Which means that what you have is something you can think of. But God is able to do much more. He's willing to give us much more of what we have. Now when I say God is willing to give you much more, I'm not saying God is uh, willing to multiply things to make you levitious. He wants to give you virtually everything you want. He wants to give you the best that he has. But there's a way we can get it. I noticed something about my dad. When my dad was still alive, you don't ask my dad anything on a Monday morning. If you go to my dad and say, hey, dad, I, I need a jacket, you know, and it just cost about five pounds, my dad would say, get out of my sight. I know him for that. So I make sure I time myself. And you know when I ask him for anything, when my mom's made a good meal and my dad sits down and enjoys it. My dad enjoys a meal when he sweats. When I notice that he's sweating after the meal, I say, oh, this is a good time. And I just go sit beside him and say, hi, dad, how are you doing? He say, oh, I'm fine. Your mom was so wonderful. In fact, did you taste the meal that she just gave me? Did you eat it? Did you guys have some? Oh, yeah, I had some. I had some too. I said, hi, dad, you know, I've been wondering, you know those shoes I wear to school? They've been, they're so tight. Uh, my friends in school have this shirt called, uh, they have these shoes called, uh, and they say, how much is it? Say, All right, I'll give you the money tomorrow. But God help me if that tomorrow becomes a Monday. I won't be able to get it. I have to wait till the Tuesday. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Now, the same thing. 
Now, it's not that God is wicked or God has a, a, a certain conditions. There are certain principles that we need to go through before we can get God's best. And that's why I titled the message I want to talk about today. is called, How You Can Get God's Best. Praise the Lord. Or I can say, rather, getting the best of God. Now, remember what I said at the beginning. Three things you need to note. All good gifts come from God. And God is willing to give us much more. The last thing I want you to note is this. Please, please, don't ever blame God for the situation you're in now. Don't. Rather, take responsibility. Why did I say that? The book of Psalms 8, verse 6, Psalm 8, verse 6, shows us that God has given all authority and ability unto us as his children. Now, whatever situation you're in now, don't blame God. I used to be a very good God blamer. In fact, I went to the, the University of God blaming. And I came out with a degree. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to find a job with that degree. And I would say, oh, why is this happening? I've been serving God. I've been doing this. I've been going here. I do this. I keep to it. I've been living a righteous life. I've been doing all sorts of things. And I bet God was looking at me from heaven and saying, all right, keep at it. You know how you feel when people blame you for what you didn't do wrong? When someone comes to you and said, it's your fault. You made it happen. It's your fault. And it wasn't actually your fault. And you know, we do the same thing to God when we blame God for the situation we're in. Now, sometimes we get into certain circumstances and situations in which God wants to build us up. But don't ever complain and mama or blame God but rather look for the solution and the way out because the Bible says there's no temptation that has come across your way that God has not provided a way of what? A way of escape and God will open your eyes in the precious name of Jesus so remember don't blame God now how do we get the best of God? how can we get the best out of him? I notice one thing today is our Thanksgiving Sunday isn't it? Praise the Lord. And I noticed that Dickiness Christian was trying to encourage us to give testimonies. Um, she was trying to look at us and tell us, oh, oh, don't be shy to give your testimony. Don't be shy to say what the Lord has done. Don't be shy to thank God. Now, I noticed that one of the ways in which we can get the best from God is when we thank him for that which we have. Now, listen to me. I'm going to say this only once. What you don't appreciate will always walk away from you. But what you appreciate will gravitate towards you. The things you don't like will always move away from you. But the things you like will always move towards you. Let me t explain to you. If you notice that people that you appreciate, people that you know say good words to, they like to be around you. But people you talk down, they run away from you. It's the same thing with God. The things you don't thank God for might be the things that will be moving away from you. Because you know what? The Bible says to him that has, what will happen? Much more will be given. But to him who says he does not have, that which he has will be what? Taken away. Thanksgiving. The book of Psalms. Psalms 50 verse 23. Psalms 50 verse 23. For you to get the best out of God, thank him for those ones which you have. Do you know that some certain things that you have, there are thousands and others, other peoples out there that are, are crying to God day and night for those things that you have? Psalms 50, in verse 23. It said, but giving thanks is a sacrifice that does what? Oh, you're not following. Giving thanks is a sacrifice that does what? Truly honors God. And you see, because of time, I won't be able to read it. If you read, get home, write this down. The, book of, the first book of Samuel, chapter 2, verse 30, says that God said to his servants then, he said, though the Levites were my priests, it doesn't mean that I will automatically honor them. The Bible said, God said, I will honor those who honor me and I will despise those who despise me. So when you honor God by thanking him, when you honor him and you lift him up, the Bible says that God, you're honoring him and he will honor you in return. And let me tell you, we serve a God that will never owe anybody. I dare you to start thanking God and see whether that thing you're thanking him for will not increase. 
Because of time, I won't be able to dwell too much on that. And you know one thing is, is that, do you know, being unthankful is a 20th century sin. You know, there are some sins that are called the 20th century sins. You know, I, I, I just put that term to it. Let's see the book of, the second book of Timothy, chapter 3, verse 2. Second Timothy, chapter 3, verse 2. Now, let's read from verse 1. It says, you should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be what? Very difficult times. So people will love only what? Themselves and their money. They will be what? Boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, and, 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 that's what's going to happen in the latter days. Now, the Bible had prophesied and said it. That certain people are going to be ungrateful. Certain people are going to be unthankful. But it's not going to be me. I thought you were going to say that too. It's not going to be me. Because the Bible said that. That's a 20th century sin. There are lovers of money. People are disobedient to parents. And the Bible says that certain people are going to become ungrateful. They're going to become un unthankful. They're not going to say, tell God, ah, uh, uh, it doesn't matter. So you need to avoid being unthankful and be thankful. Another thing that, why I said we should thank God and that's the right way which you can get something from God is this. I noticed that a lot of people pray. But do you know what? There's something you need to mix with your prayer that will make your prayer get answered quickly. Let's see the book of uh, Philippians chapter 4. The book of James chapter 4 verse 3, we're not going to open that, but open to Philippians 4 if you have your Bible with you. Philippians 4 verse 6. But in the book of James chapter 4 verse 3, it says, You ask what you don't receive because you ask with wrong motives. That word motives, it's translated in another version to say, You ask what you don't receive because you ask the wrong way. That's not how you're supposed to ask. I believe God is going to correct the way we ask today. In the book of Philippians, who's in Philippians 4? Philippians 4, verse 6. Okay. I said, do not worry about anything. Instead, pray about what? Everything. Tell God what you need and, and what? And what? Uh, uh, can we have another version of that scripture, probably the King James Version? He said, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication. Look at those three, th three things. The first one is prayer. The second one is what? Supplication. And then the third one, with thanksgiving. So you see, a lot of people have been praying. They've been doing supplications. They've been some, another version of that scripture says, with prayer and petitions. A lot of us, we give petitions to God. We pray from morning till night. We do night vigils. But we don't add thanksgiving to it. That's the ingredient that makes our prayers powerful in the presence of God. Thanksgiving. Have you taken time to thank God for that great thing you have? To you, it might not look great, but it's great to someone else. I was playing on the piano, uh, uh, I think it was after Holly night. And someone walked over to me and said, are you the one playing that or is it music? I said, I'm the one. He said, all right, remove your hands and let me see. And I took my hands off. And he said, my God, you can play the piano? To me, it's, I don't even know how to play. If you put me beside Israel, I mean, I'll be zero, he'll be a million. But to him, that's a spectacular thing. And so I had to say, Lord, I thank you for the little I know how to do. Praise the Lord. And that shows the same thing. If you learn to mix your prayer requests, your supplications with thanksgiving unto God, then you'll be able to get the best out of God. And I pray as you do so, God will help you in the name of Jesus. Dickness Christine was mentioning the ten lepers the other time. You know that when you thank God, God adds to that thing which you thank him for. Because the Bible said that ten lepers came to Jesus in the book of Luke chapter 17. And those ten lepers, they were shouting. Because they couldn't move closer to Jesus, they stood up and said, Jesus, help us! I bet some of them must have been Jamaicans. They must have said it in Jamaican language. Some of them might be Africans. They must have shouted in African or whatever language. And they shouted from afar. And Jesus saw them. I said, all right, 
go show yourself to the priest. He didn't even move closer to them. He said, go show yourselves to the priest. While they were going, one of them noticed that they were healed. Not only was he healed, all the others were healed. So you know why they had to go show themselves to the priest? Because in those days, if you have leprosy, the priests have to certify that your leprosy is no more and that you're allowed to walk in the public. If the priests don't certify you that your leprosy is no more, you're not allowed to walk in the public. When you're coming, you have to have a bell, ringing a bell. The leopards are coming. The leopards are coming. Can you imagine how that is? That pe you know, people see you from afar and they start running helter-skelter, get up, and you pick your children and your children ask you, Mommy, who are those men? And you say, they're leopards. You're not supposed to touch them, you know. But one of them found out that he was healed. And the Bible said he came back. And guess what? That one that came back wasn't a, gen wasn't a Jew. The Bible said he was a foreigner. And Jesus said something to him. He said, your faith has saved you. He received salvation, which means God added to his healing. Not only did God heal him, God gave him eternal life. When you thank God for something, God will add to that thing and make it much more. In the precious name of Jesus. I'm going to ask us a question. What did David defeat Goliath with? Somebody know it? Huh? How many stones? Five stones. Somebody said one stone. Okay, now, now it's becoming a debate. If you say one stone, let me see your hand. If you say five stones, let me see your hand. All right. Well, I'm about to, sorry to tell you that David didn't defeat Goliath with five stones. He didn't even defeat Goliath with the stones. He defeated Goliath with giving thanks to God. Because of time, I won't be able to read the story. But let me tell you the story. David was sent by his dad to go give food to his brothers. And he noticed that Goliath had been shouting and he would be screaming at them. You know what he did? He asked them, he said, what will the king give to whoever uh, kills this man? And they told him that if you kill this man, the king will give you uh, several wives and, you know, give you several treasures. You know what he said when, he, when they took him to the king? And the king said, are you sure you're able to go up against him? He said, no, listen. God who has helped me against the lion. God who has helped me against the bear. He was proclaiming God's testimony. And he was saying, God, I know you've helped me against the lion. I know you've helped me against the bear. I know you've helped me while I was keeping the sheep. This Goliath will also fall the same way you helped me before. That was what killed Goliath. The stones were just a manifestation of the power of God that came as a result of him giving glory to God and remembering the things God has done. And you are also like that. There was a time in my life I was trusting God for something. And I said, God, please help me. And the Holy Spirit asked me a question. Have I done this for you before? I said, you have. I said, why don't you trust that I will do it again? And do you know, I keep using that, that phrase as a prayer point whenever I need something from God. I just remind them, oh, Lord, you've done this. You did this last week. Please, would you do this one again? Because it's your nature to do things. I'm telling you, uh, I noticed something from the Bible. The Bible said the Israelites, they crossed the river Jordan. And the Bible said that the ridge of Jordan stopped because of them. But when they did that, you know what God told them? He said, pick up 12 stones and build a memorial. What was the purpose of that memorial? They said, when, when your children ask you what happened here, so that you can tell them, so that your children will not forget me, so that your children will remember that I am a mighty God. It's because God wants memorials like that. Why do you think God said he seeks for people that will worship him in spirit and in truth? Because God cannot praise himself. Have you noticed that God cannot thank himself? Angels behold the face of God and they praise God because they were made to do that. But you and I, we've been given a will. We've been given a purpose. You can decide tomorrow and say you don't want to thank God. You can decide tomorrow and say you don't want to praise him. But the angels can't do that. But when God sees a man that will think of the goodness of God, that will recount what God has done, that will stand before him in the morning and say, Lord, I thank you for giving me another opportunity to see another day. And a man that was a woman that will stand before God and say, Lord, I'm beautiful, not because I know how to put on makeup. It's because your glory is shining upon me. And I thank you, God. And if God sees a man that will stand up and say, I know how to speak, not because I have a good voice, not because I'm great, not because it's your mercy. If God sees 
sees a man or a woman that says I have children not because I know how to have a husband or have a, have a wife but because you've been merciful to me he looks at that man and says yes that's the person I want but we don't have a lot of people that are so thankful today and we just bypass it because we hear the world all the time give thanks oh, thank God let's thank God let's thank God it's become a passing phrase. I was listening to Bishop Bo yesterday, and he was, uh, he was, I think he was praying. He was, he was praying with someone on the phone, and he was said, "Let's." And the person said, "Pray with me about a particular thing." I couldn't hear the other person, but the first thing he said, the first thing he said was that, "Let's thank God." That was the first thing he said, and those words struck my mind the moment he spoke it. Let's thank God, and he kept on saying that for everybody he spoke to. Let's thank God. Thank him for that something you have. Praise the Lord. And that's why we don't get the best from God. How would you feel if somebody, uh, you give someone something and the person just looks at you the next day and doesn't even talk about it and just walks past you, you know. You won't feel happy. But do you know, if Israel gives me something and I go to Israel the first day and I say, thank you, Israel, for that gift, and I go to him the next day and I say, thank you, Israel, again, and I go to him the third day, before you know it, he begins to ask, are you sure you're okay? But if I keep on saying thank you, he begins to think, oh, maybe I should give him another gift. That doesn't mean you're going to keep him saying thank you to me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. One more thing before I close, because I've got five minutes. The thing has turned red. God didn't answer my prayer for him not to turn green. Praise the Lord. Now, one thing you need to do to get God's best is remind God of his word. Find your place in his word and remind him. Let me show you a scripture before the thing turns more than red. Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah 43. You need to remind God of his word. Isaiah 43. And I want us to read verse 26. Isaiah 43 and 26. Praise the Lord. It said, put me in remembrance. Let us plead together, declare thou that thou mayest be justified. Now God was speaking here to the Israelites and said, put me in remembrance of my word. Remind me. Now, I asked that same question. I thought God was, I mean, why would you remind somebody of something? It means that person might have forgotten. No, it's not that God forgotten. God has forgotten, but God just wants to know whether you really know or you really understand what he has for you. Now, it's your duty to find out what he has written and said about you and find it and remind him about it. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 12, verse 28. Ezekiel 12, 28. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. Ezekiel 12, and verse 28. So this is the message that came from the Lord. Son of man, the people are saying, he's talking about the distant future. His visions won't come through. Therefore tell them, this is what the sovereign law says. No more delay. I will now do everything I have spoken. Another version says I have threatened because he was speaking against the, uh, the, he was speaking against the, the enemies of Israel. Because what God has threatened. Now, the Bible says that God said, I hope there will be no more delay of the word that he has spoken concerning you. There will be no more delay. The word won't, it won't, it won't take long before it comes to pass. But do you know that word? Do you know the word he's spoken concerning you? Have you found that word he's spoken concerning you? Bible said Jesus went into the temple and he opened the Bible and he opened the book of Isaiah and he started to read. He found his place in the world. You need to find your place and tell it to God that Lord you have promised me that whenever I cry unto you, you will hear my cry. You have promised me that whenever I'm in trouble and I call unto you, you will answer. If you found that scriptures and you've read them to yourself, you can go back to God and speak those words back to him and you will see him fulfill those things in your life as you do so in the name of Jesus. Finally, for you to carry 
for you to get the best of God, wherever you go, carry the presence of God. I'm telling you, listen to me. Let me tell you one thing. You see, except that thing doesn't belong to you or God doesn't want you to have it. If you carry the presence of God, no man, no man will be able to refuse you of whatever is yours. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 8, if God be for us, who can stand against us? Carry the presence of God everywhere you go. If you're going for an interview, carry the presence of God. I'm telling you, uh, you heard what Vivian said. Uh, Vivian was telling us that uh, uh, she, 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 she was chatting with her uh, driving instructor. And she prayed that, God, I don't want a female instructor. I don't know why she didn't want that anyway. But uh, she said uh, she was chatting with her, with her instructor. And, you know, they were just chatting and we were talking together. And, and you heard the testimony of Joash, the pastor's son. On his first day of having his test, the, he was doing the test and he reversed into another car. And his instructor was there. Now, if I were his instructor, he's failed. If it were me. But you know what? The presence of God was there. I bet pastor must have done something to bring the presence with him. And then the presence of God was there. And do you know what the Bible says? The Bible says the hearts of prince and princes are in the hands of God. And like causes of what he directs them. I'm telling you, God can direct anybody's heart to favor you. If you only carry his presence with you. I know somebody who was sent from England back to Nigeria. And they said, you have to go back to your country. And, and go and reapply before you come back here. And he went back to his country, Nigeria. And he went back and he stayed there. And you know, because of him, he stayed there for several months and God had to make them make another law that will allow him to come back into this country because of one man another law was made by a whole nation God can change things around can turn things around for you you need to just carry his presence Bible says in the book of Psalms 100 enter verse 4 enter into his gates with what with thanksgiving in your heart and into his court with praise do not let praise cease from your mouth don't let thanksgiving cease from your mouth when you're going to work in the morning for for that the wicked person that's at your place of work. Just say, Father, I thank you. Lord, I give you glory because you're a faithful God. When you're going to an interview, just say, Lord, I thank you because I've already found favor. When you're going for a business job, begin to say, Lord, I found favor. I thank you for your favor. Begin to bless him and honor him. Do not let his praise cease from your mouth. By that, you'll carry his presence everywhere you go. Do you know the presence of God can make your wife love you the more or your husband love you the more? I'm not going to talk about that. Praise the Lord. I know you like that one. <laughs> Especially the husbands. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Carry his presence in everything you do. Carry his presence. And as you do that, the Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus. Let's bow down our heads. Father, we thank you, Lord. I want you to think of God and say, Lord, I refuse to be ungrateful this morning. And I want to thank you. Begin to thank God for things that look, seems to be funny. Thank God for your shoes, your, uh, your, your clothes. Just think of something and thank him and say, Lord, I thank you. Let's acknowledge it. And because of the time I would have told you, do you know it's proud people that don't thank God? Saul wasn't, 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 wasn't thinking of God when Goliath came against him. And do you know in, in first sec, first second, first Samuel chapter 11, Saul had defeated the Amalekites just as a result of God. But he never thought of that because he was so proud and full of himself. The Bible says that in the last days, some people will be ungrateful. But that's not our portion. You are not part of those who are ungrateful. We are the grateful ones. And the Bible says that those who have much more will be given unto them. Let's say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for that which I have. I thank you for that which I have. Come on, open your mouth and say, Lord, I thank you. Thank you for my children. Thank you, Lord, for my husband. Thank you for my job. Thank you for my home. Thank you, Lord, for the skills that I have. Thank you for the ability. Oh, Lord, oh, my Thank you for my career. Thank you, Lord, for my beauty. Thank you, Lord, for the way I look. Thank you for the clothes that I have. Thank you for my car. Thank you, Lord, for my wife, oh Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for, for the years that you've given to me. Thank you, Lord, for I'm still alive today. I'm not sick. I don't walk. I don't go around in a wheelchair. I don't need to be aided here and there. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. 
Lord, we thank you, Lord, for Kingsworth Family Church. Because you've never caused us to grief, oh Lord Almighty. You've never allowed any grief, oh Lord, in our lives. But Lord, you've kept on giving us joy. We thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh Lord, we give you praise and glory, Lord. Lord, we give you glory, Lord Almighty God. Oh, somebody lift up your voice and just bless him. Give him praise. Give him praise. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy. Say, Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. You're worthy, Lord. That song that Daniel sang with us said, He's always fighting for us. Heaven's angels all around. And our delight is found in knowing that he wears the victor's crown. Oh, Lord, we thank you, Lord. Because we know we have victory through you, Lord Jesus. We've got the victory, not because we know how to do it, but because you, our Lord, have been faithful. Thank you for victory. Begin to thank him for those things that you're trusting him for. Mention them to him. Thank you, Lord, for that, my husband, that's not here yet, because I know he's on his way. Thank you, Lord, for that car that I don't have yet, because it's on his way. Thank you, Lord, for that house. Thank you, Lord, for everything. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, oh, thank you, Lord, oh, my give you praise and glory, Lord. Describe majesty unto you, Lord. We acknowledge you, Lord, that you are the faithful God. If you're here this morning and you know you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, and you know you want to just renew your relationship with him, or you want to have a deeper relationship with the Lord, I just want to pray for you quickly. I'd like you to just put up your hand if you know you, you don't have a good relationship with God and you, you want to deepen your relationship with Him. You know quite well that, uh, yes, uh, I don't understand what they're talking about this morning. I'm far from it. I'll just pray a prayer with you quickly. Father, thank you, Lord. And I pray, Lord, today that, Lord, there'll be restoration, oh Lord. Restoration of many things that have been lost in the name of Jesus. I hear the word restoration. There's someone here, you've lost something. But God is telling you that he's going to restore it in a thousand folds in the name of Jesus. You're someone here and it seems that you've lost virtually something very important. God is going to replace it with something more better in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for restoration, Lord. And Lord, we give you praise and glory. And I pray, Lord, that, Lord, your, as your people go, Lord Almighty, in this week, that, Lord, they will have a reason to bless you and to honor you, Lord Almighty. They have a reason to thank you, Lord, in everything that concerns them. In the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Make sure you add us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit the church website.